welcome everybody. Um, it's really nice to see um, everybody here for this talk. Uh, the sixth of the uh, Art House Open Talk series. And um, we're very excited to have Joey Holder and Megan Broadmeadow with us today. Um, just a little bit about how this is going to work before I do the formal introductions for those who haven't attended any of these talks before. Um, there'll be a presentation. Uh, Megan and Joey will present for about 20, 30 minutes. Then I'll have a discussion with them for maybe 10, 15 minutes. Uh, and then we'll go to questions from the audience, from the floor, uh, whatever you call it in virtual space. Uh, and if you can type those questions into the chat, then Leanne, hi Leanne, will uh, will will read them read them out. The the settings are, are automatically set to mute. But if you do want to ask a question in person, which we're very happy for you to do, just put your hand up and you can ask the question to Megan and Joey directly. Um, I think that's mainly everything you need to know about how this is going to work. Uh, we have Rebecca and Leanne from Meadow Arts here, who will tell me if I say <laughs> if I'm missing something. Hopefully, uh, that's great. And uh, and welcome uh, Megan and Joey. Um, so, just a brief introduction. Uh, this is the, I think, the seventh of the artist talks in this session. And it's the sixth season that um, the Art House Open Talk series has been organized between Meadow Arts uh, and the Fine Art Department at the University of Worcester. And uh, I'd really like to thank uh, Rebecca and Leanne for setting up the sessions and for, helping, well, for setting up the talks online. Um, so the talks are gonna be recorded and we're aiming to get the recordings of the talk uh, up to the, Meadow Arts website in about a turnaround of about two weeks, roughly. But that's uh, the, so the, the the talks are going to be recorded. Uh, just to say what's already up there from this year um, so far, we have had a talk by Rupi Dillon, Hamja Hassan, Juno Projects, Andy Holden, Jack Evans, Deanne Crooks, uh, and this is the talk today um, by Joey and Megan. And the, on the 19th, we have the final talk by Van Lee Burke. Uh, so those talks are available to watch. The ones that have happened already are available to, to listen to and watch online through the Meadow Arts website, as this will be in a couple of weeks' time. So just a quick introduction for Joey and Megan, who I have to say personally, really, really excited to, to have here. And um, yeah, I think they're doing amazing work. It's really, really important for everybody. Uh, and I'm very excited to hear what they have to say about, they're primarily going to be talking about a project they've done called Spur World, but I hopefully will also be talking about their own practices. In their own individual practices, both Joey and Megan, I mean, they make very their own individual work, but they also make work, they have shared a shared sort of characteristics, that is to make immersive environments within art spaces that combine kind of stage sets, uh, digital video, and importantly, both artists are using VR in some way and are kind of blurring the spaces between the virtual and the real, and the IRL and the, and the online. Uh, and both Joey and Megan share an interest in science fiction, in esoteric religions and occult systems, uh, in kind of future life forms, I and mean, particularly Joey's real interest in, in the Kind of future of genetic engineering and what life might be in the future and and both share this interest in not only how digital technology has already completely transformed our existences but it's how it's likely to shape our understandings of reality in the future but today they're going to be talking about a project called spur world this was a virtual artist residency that they created uh, for recently graduated artists and it occurred during lockdown and in Spur World, the participants used avatars and pseudo personas to find new modes of thinking and creating collectively. Uh, and together, the artists of Spur World are forging an artist network without the usual boundaries enforced by the real world, um, visiting virtual wor worlds and developing their work through mentoring and peer to peer networks. So it's kind of got a very strong social dimension uh, to Spur World. So um, without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Megan and Joey and uh, yeah, enjoy. 
Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, thanks so much, um, John and Rebecca and Lee Ann, for inviting us to talk. Um, it might be a bit disappointing, I don't know, but yeah, we're not really going to talk about our own artist practices mm -hmm. that much. It will just be a very um, brief overview, which, yeah, John has already um, touched on. Um, I mean, yeah, we both um, are involved with making digital works, I guess. We, I guess we're involved, both involved with world building, I would say. So our work exists over lots of different, um, different platforms and um, online as well as offline. Um, and we build these kind of like, yeah, immersive worlds and immersive environments. And um, yeah, so we met at Goldsmiths when we were studying um, there together. And um, I guess we, when we sort of like was thinking about this project, we was thinking about the, um, I guess like education in general and um, like what it felt like to be studying together and the kinds of like conversations that we had when we were studying and how important like peer-to-peer -peer learning was in our development really. And um, when, um, lockdown hit, um, we both got our projects, like as artists, postponed or cancelled, obviously due to the pandemic. And we thought, like, how can we help graduating artists that their degree shows would have got either cancelled or postponed, or they would have been um, presented in a different way, presented in a digital format. Um, and we really thought to ourselves, that's you know, such a shame that education, that their education has been cut short like that, because, you know, actually being able to attend, um, you know, be in the studio, be on campus, like to talk to, um, talk to other students, like that is so much an important part of, um, of learning. So we was like, how can we like create something, um, using like virtual tools um, to, um, to kind of like help a group of graduating students. Um, so that's where Spur was kind of started, I guess. Um, Megan, do you wanna add anything to that? We haven't like planned actually how we're gonna go about this kind of like swapping and changing, but maybe we can like, um, yeah, just kind of take it in turns and have a conversation as well. Um, oh, hang on. I need to actually, I need to share my screen, don't I? <laughs> One minute. Um, I just went on silent now for a second. Yeah, no, <laughs> absolutely. Okay, yeah. Okay. Joey's doing tech, tech wizardry today. I know. <laughs> I mean, we okay, next... can you sh see my screen now? Yeah, I can see your screen, although I can't see my notes. So I'm going to just minimize. There we go. Yay. <laughs> yeah, I think, um, yeah, I mean, I. Yeah, it's, it's sort of like, it just kind of happened organically as in the project. We were, we were talking about it. We were, you know, just chatting because we're in lockdown. And then Joey was running Chaos Magic Space in Nottingham and I was set in space in Bristol. And uh, yeah, um, I guess that alongside, I think they should mention that alongside our, our artistic practices, we like to make life even more complicated by running spaces and running events. And I've run festivals before and, um, you know, we've got all these other things that we do as well. I teach uh, in education in Bournemouth. So I guess I was kind of feeling that um, element on my side because I was seeing it directly affecting the students. And so, yeah, we're just chatting in lockdown. Like everyone does, like, hey, how you doing? Let's have a chat. And then suddenly we've done an Arts Council application without even realising we were going to do it. Like, it was just like, boom, boom done. <laughs> yeah to see what happens oh, oh right okay it's happening cool great <laughs> um yeah it did um I think it did all happen very quickly I guess we um put the ideas together for a project and then yeah suddenly we was up and running um yeah and then we had the open call and yeah um yeah um but yeah so <laughs> So I'm just reading off my slides. So like some of the, I mean, I guess some of the aims of the project that we started with, we said we wanted it to be non-hierarchical. Um, we didn't want to 
uh, like replicate this kind of competitive nature, I guess, that we found a lot ourselves in the art world. And um, I guess, um, I guess like I really felt like that when I left, you know, like during art school and when I left art school as well, that, um, I mean, people are kind of like, when, you, when you're a student, you're marked individually, there's not that much kind of um, encouragement to collaborate. Um, and when you have shows, it's obvious, it, it, it's, it's quite often like, you're the individual artist like creating work. So I think we was quite critical of that context as well, wanting to, um encourage kind of like comradeship and um collective um kind of art making and thinking about how we could create a structure where that could happen like in a digital yeah. realm as well and, and and connectivity in this time of like the weirdness of lockdown and thinking about these you know everyone kind of going out into the world but not even going out into the world like all these people these graduates not having any you know where do they go like where were they going to normally all the structures that were there to support them had been gone like well you know nothing was open no spaces and, and we felt like it's a crucial time in in that in that period when you're first out you know if you don't carry on if you don't do stuff you know there's a real there was a real danger of like lots of artists just being lost you know and um so we been creating a network for everyone to come together yeah um, peer-to-peer -peer learning shared learning and we realized also that this could be like a across the nation like we can bring people together across the UK that are in the same situation because we're suddenly online and we're doing ones digitally so trying to use that technology as a kind of um uh, to its advantage I guess um in the circumstances which is yeah, yeah I think has uh, something that's really been amazing about it all um yeah so how could we I mean community is like this word that's banged on about all the time at the moment but um yeah we was really thinking about how can we build you yeah, know a creative community who could support each other during the circumstances um so we launched an open call for Spur um and we contacted um lots of different universities across the UK and a few elsewhere as well um and um I mean, our main network, I guess, because we're both based in the UK is UK. So um, a lot of the applicants did come from the UK, um, but we did get some international applicants as well. Um, and we were absolutely inundated and we thought, <laughs> oh no. Because <laughs> um, we wasn't oh. actually expecting to um, get so many applicants, but no. then, we really, then we really thought like, we've got to step something up here because this, because of the amount of applicants, we thought mm -hmm. like this is something that's so needed. That's kind of like, um, I guess like bridging the gap like between education and like professional practice maybe as well. Um, and um, yeah, and I think like a lot of universities maybe, you know, well, everybody at that current time, like in April last year was like, you know, how do we, um, how do we, like teach online how do we um you know maybe create like places where the the students can i don't know have a virtual studio space or any of these things how can we like facilitate this without people actually being able to come to classes um so so yeah spur was kind of born we got um hang on one sec i'm just gonna click my notes um we got um I think about 125 applications or something like that. And then we um, we actually thought to ourselves, like our whole <laughs> our whole aim was actually to be kind of like non-hierarchical and non-gatekeepers. And then we thought, oh my God, like we've got all these applications um, and now we actually have to choose between them. And we thought we really don't want to do that. <laughs> Um, but we did so, Let's choose um, so we found ourselves then thinking right we're gonna have um like a core kind of um group of participants um that we work with a little bit more closely um and that are really um part of kind of like shaping 
the pilot project and what we're doing and um, and feeding back on what we're doing and really engineering yeah. the space. And also um, because the, the artists who were giving the presentations could only hand, you know, they were learning too. They hadn't been doing online presentations and stuff before. They didn't know if they could handle a lot. So that was yeah. we kept that small. Yeah. And then we invited the rest of the artists. So we invited all 125 of them um, <laughs> to be part of the platform. And we was a little bit worried because we didn't even know if the platform that we'd built would actually take 125 people on it, but it did. <laughs> so that was good. Um, <laughs> And yes, yeah, so some universities came on board as well. So Liverpool John Moores, um, Arts University Bournemouth and the School of Visual Arts in New York um, all like came on board to support us. Um, we managed to get some Arts Council funding as well and some other support from like software companies that allowed us to use their um, software for the students to create stuff with. Um, so we... Um, right, let me just go. Yeah, I think. All oh, right, do you want me to do another? These, yeah, sorry, carry on. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then, um, so yeah, we have this kind of core community. Um, and yeah, eventually, I guess what you can say is the core went on to create, a, you know, the fully curated exhibition, which is we've just launched now. But within that, the community also got opportunities, workshops, access. Um, including on the platform, which uh, such as the project with Om um, Social Club, and they've also gone on to do the residency with Mycological Twist. So we we kept feeding opportunities out to the community. We're also using the platform as a space for sharing opportunities. So here's the digital art op opportunity you could get involved with. Hey, this pe these people are looking for that. Here's a talk. Here's you know. So we use the platform as information as well. Yeah, um, and. Uh, and so, we did a lot of the stuff in as avatars so yeah <laughs> like maybe we should talk a little bit about the platform then so mm -hmm. there's, yeah. there's, there's the main website and then there's a kind of like platform maybe I'll skip through a couple of these oh yeah mm -hmm. here it is a square platform so there was like a back end to the website functionality so people could actually log in um to this kind of area where they would I guess it like acted like a social network mm -hmm. so they could like share their images. I guess it like act like a virtual studio space as well. So they could chat to each other. They could share images and video. There would be an events um, bit in their calendar. There was different groups that they could make. Um, and yeah, we could kind of like, it was this kind of like central hub, I guess, of activity um, at the back end of the website. Um, for us to share information um, and one of the like main points that we haven't actually touched on yet is that um, we kind of thought a lot about this competitive nature of making art and these kind of like individual um, creative practices that we have and we thought of a way of kind of like maybe challenging that or skewing that was to try to get rid of people's existing identities and egos. So we worked with a group of artists called Omp Social Club, um, who specialism is in uh, LARP and RPG. So that's basically where um, you do kind of like characterizations and um, uh, you kind of like take on a new identity um, and then act as this like new identity in this new role. So when people, when the participants signed up to the, um, the back end of the website and went into this kind of like um, uh, this, this platform, um, yeah, they didn't share their real name. They kind of constructed like um, through this series of workshops and through the platform, they constructed these new kind of like personas and like created work in these new personas and chatted to each other in these new personas as well. So there was some really odd abstract like <laughs> conversations that like went on as well like that were just like out there um so I did I think it was like a month-long intensive LARP or RPG yeah. in the platform 
kind of early on, which really sort of set the scene of conversations. And then, yeah, they we we worked with the core. Here's a sort of image of what it looks like on the inside. So it's kind of like a MySpace vibe sort of Discord mash. <laughs> I know what Discord is now, so I can say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and you can sort of see the functionality. So it has a, fa- yeah, there's there's different tabs, there's different ways of connecting with people. You can chat and you can share images, but you will, they're also within it, there's this thread of like conversations in which the role player is playing out. And and then once they'd kind of had that intro from OMSC, you know, they carried on with those characters. They go in there and they carry on communicating in the core one of the things we did with the core was for them to kind of um, work on ways in which to carry that on and engage the community, set them tasks, help them pimp up their avatars, help them kind of, you know, com- continue to generate uh, content and share their artworks. So this is an example of someone sharing their artworks. I think one of the things that doesn't happen on there is that you just get like round, too many random memes. Everything on there is kind of like, generated through in a kind of in this role play scenario it's kind of the people aren't putting adverts in there you know it's like it's kind of artwork led through text and image and, and video um that was yeah it. um yeah i mean it's it's kind of complicated like we could probably <laughs> like talk about this for about three yeah. hours this yes yeah. but like yeah you can ask there's, yeah there's various <laughs> things that they can do there was like a Oh yeah, there was like a watch zone as well, like a whiteboard area where they could collaboratively draw and share stuff. But yeah, we'll, we won't go on too much about that. Yeah. Right? yeah. Um, other things. <laughs> other things. So, um, so yeah, we invited um, a lot of people. I can't remember exactly how many, but there was probably a. There, we was doing workshops probably once every two weeks at least. Um, and um, there was a whole range of um, practitioners that we invited um, to do the workshops um, with the participants. And I mean, we really wanted to mix a kind of like, not just kind of like theoretical talks as well. There was some real like practical workshops as well. And ones where like, particularly like learning different kinds of like software as well. So, um, that's a list of some workshops. Um, These are on the website as well. Look and explore, so maybe that's something. Yeah. But you can get a if feel. Can you just take over on. a sec? When, um, yeah. Actually... Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, so you can kind of get a feel for the kind of people that we're giving a talk. Um, you know, talking about deconstructed community, computer-generated images, performative code, um, some of them were more skill-based or in the future. And we did a lot of them uh, through avatars as well. I wonder if I can share my screen because I'm, I'm, I've got the, <laughs> I've got, I've got it going. I've got it going as well. What's this here? Let me just forward while she's off. Right. You want, yeah. do you want to share your screen, Megan? I can do. Can I? Oh, you're back. You're back. <laughs> I'm back. I'm back. Okay. And well, if you don't, if we may as well carry on with you, then if that's it. So, yeah, I think, you know, you just get a feel for the kind of topics. So there's a kind of uh, thematic thing of kind of magic, you know, other, otherness, um, ritual, persona. Um, yeah, these are just some of the images, Hotel Bardo. These are some of the images of Antonio's workshop with the performative code, you know, using visual language, constructing working in ways that they might not have, you know, aesthetics and things, you know, challenging what they're, you know, if they're working through an avatar, they can go down a different route that maybe they've never thought of doing it. You know, we had some people that are sculptors, not everyone was a uh, performance led artist, you know, and sound artists. We tried to kind of get a broad range of people coming through. So hope, you know, that they, and, and within that, they were all kind of chatting in their own channels as well. So they, they're in persona. There's different ways of communicating as we're doing these things. So yeah, um, a quite broad range of pro- processes and practices. Uh, one by Stephanie Moran with uh, using, constructing narratives, um, using, uh, ooh, what's that? Node, 
loud stuff. <laughs> a band called um, Twine, I think it is. Twine, that's so right. it, Twine is a yeah program that allows you to kind of create these. It's like done for a URL, so it's done online through a browser, and then you kind of can create these um, these narratives through these fragments and join them up in these yeah node sort of diagrams, and then it will sort of link it all together and put it on a web page for you. Which yeah, is- I think it creates links, doesn't it? Like choose your own adventure <laughs> narrative, maybe. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, yeah, just briefly, like, we explored, um, like, lots of existing digital worlds as well, lots of older, like, virtual realms, so we explored um, things like Second Life, and we all explored other kind of, like, virtual rooms that you can hang out in, including Mozilla Hubs, um, and, yeah, so I guess, guess (laughs) yeah, this was... (laughs) This is the chaos that existed inside that space. Um, this is one of the collaborative drawings that they did after a um, after a foraging session in Second Life. Um, yeah, um, this is all the participants in Second Life um, that was led by the Mycological Twist. Um, so yeah, again, like exploring different avatars. Um, yeah second life is really fun i forgot how fun second life is um so then we come to um so yeah after a kind of like intensive six months of exploring these virtual realms like this mentorship program and um yeah being together we um launched our like public program which just launched last week so the participants, so the core group, um, which consisted of um, 14 um, participants in the end, um, mm-hmm. they decided that they wanted to create like an online world, um, like a kind of 3D walkthrough game world um, through the program Unity. Um, and they wanted to do that within the pseudo characters and these personas that they'd built. Um, And this was also, one of the participants also made a spur bot, which um, was this kind of like generative, uh, I don't know what you'd call it, like a virus or a molecule or something. Yes, what's on like um, Megan's screen behind her. (laughs) So um, that was the thing that there was this tentacular thing that kind of like led led you through this kind of central hub online. And then you could visit the different different participants worlds um, through this this spur bot. the spur bot was also a Twitter bot as well. So there's, um, so from some of the crazy conversations that was had on the platform with the participants, the spur bot would like um, take fragments of those conversations and then spit them out as well in, in tweets. And that's well, it's still doing it. Still. <laughs> yeah, it tweets about every 20 minutes. I think. I know. <laughs> so, um, that's, that's, that's kind of like the, the yeah spurs stream of consciousness i guess which is yeah still going um and yeah so maybe we can i don't know how much time we've got left but we can oh yeah so the spur bot is on the right hand side here is some of the tweets so this is just like the front end of the website um and I can take you through some of these slides, but we're hoping that we might be able to do a virtual walkthrough of what the participants have made as well. Um, so yeah, maybe we could, um, yeah, yeah, we can, yeah, yeah, maybe maybe that's a good good thing to do. Um, so, or yeah, because it might make a little bit more sense if you see it in there. <laughs> yeah. But this is a teaser <laughs> of all the different words that they've been making you get a feel for, yeah, you know, what it what it feels like. The the kind of the complexity of what they've produced. Um, and I think that's what's been really special about it, is that um, you know, they've really been able to um, me- um mesh and merge this kind of game game land, but without a kind of you know, without a kind of 
competitiveness to it you know they've been able to explore and indulge themselves in in the the the, the complexities that you can build in this in this kind of environment yeah and um, that feels quite special about it um I mean, we barely did anything. It's just kind of appeared this bit. It's like we we brought in I a curator, Julia. <laughs> <laughs> they did it all. Like we, you know, they just, you know, we facilitated at this point. Really, you know, we have to give a lot of credit to the them as a group of artists and and to, you yeah, know, their, their technical ability there. But um, yeah, I think we we we've we've it's kind of been nice to kind of like allow them that space and to you know to trust in them. We brought Julia Greenway in as a curator to kind of run the public program. Um, she's worked with Joey before, and you know she's got that that side of experience, you know, for for it. And we just, you know, she's gone in and had the conversations. We've done one to one with them as well over the course of the month, you know, in the months. But she's taken the reins and just helped them to 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 bring that together and to kind of write the curatorial theme for it so it's organic in the way that it advances in the way that we kind of um are um you know working with the artists we we anticipate you know giving them you know more control if they want it if people want to carry on um as we go through because they've got skills they've got they've got they've got the moves they've got, you know and and you know we, we want it to grow and it not to be kind of just us we want it to you know have their input as much as ours because it's theirs as well as ours I think that's kind of important it's everyone's <laughs> anyone who wants it <laughs> uh, um and, and yeah, the public outcomes is yeah this this is as we say it's it's on there now and you can go and have a look through it It'll take about three hours to go through all the artworks, really. Can um, you see, can everybody see it on the screen now? Like the, um, yeah, yeah, cool. Um, also, so this is what you see when you're entering the world. Um, so this is like the the kind of spur bot and the main, the main hub. Um, I don't know if you can hear the sound or not, mm -hmm. but there is like a, a sort of soundscape as well, which changes as you move through. Hear the sound, yeah. It, it, it requires a little bit of computer power, mainly an internet connect, a good internet connection is the key to it. So it's all browser based. We don't, haven't done a download version, we, we're, we're, we're deliberating that at the moment, but we're trying to keep it online so that it's accessible. We try to go for like the easiest possible way. I just to have such a complicated thing, and we, we decided on browser based, but yeah. Within this, you go and visit them, and then if you find an out, uh, find something you're interested in, you click press uh, Z, and then and then you go to that artist. So those kind of sculptural objects represent an artist's world, and you can go in and visit them. And again, just to reiterate, all the worlds are designed around the characters in which they started playing in the, in the sort of MySpace world. Spur, spur platform. I don't know. We we got too many. <laughs> Too many platforms. I think that's Spur, spur Space. Maybe that should be Spur, spur Space and this is Spur World. I don't know. <laughs> so they're they're kind of they've they've been reimagining this kind of avatars world. This is the outcome based on the conversations and the game play that they did at the beginning. So, so one guys, you've got five minutes left. Five minutes, lovely. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and this isn't a piece which is like audio led immersive audio based on three aspects of being wasn't it material sexuality and uh metaphysical is that right yeah religion there's definitely Three lots of sex in it but i can't remember it <laughs> <laughs> it was more to do with yeah a fluidity of sex you know non-binary or binary, you know, binary. Uh -huh. Um, yeah, and like as Megan says, it will take you, it, you know, you could spend a long time in these worlds. Um, they're really great. Um, and yeah, it does take a bit of loading on your computer, but it is worth worth the wait. Um, yeah. yeah, I'll go back to my, I'll go back to the slides again. Yeah. Present. Um, 
so I guess we haven't got long left, but yeah, we also did a, um, well, Megan, you can probably talk more about this because she was leading on it, but there was a, um, an in-game performance. Well, mm -hmm. there was like over a month um, long for some of the Spur community artists. Um, so some of the people that didn't, um, weren't in the core group, like the kind of like larger group took part in, um, a sort of world building exercise in the video game eco um so they was yeah this building a world in there, <laughs> creating a kind of um sorry i'm just gonna mute i think i've got the world playing on in the back yeah it loves going for it yeah this is like a group a group photo of of them in the on day one in the residency so it's like a residency in a video game so they were playing the game, but they were also, yeah, getting to build. Um, uh, the, the challenge was at the, at the end of the 21 days, a, a meteorite was going to strike and hit the game, but they were to build and produce a series of artworks um, in response to that experience. And, you know, they built artworks within the game. They also built artworks that went onto a website as well through mycological twists. So, yeah, again, the link. They, to um, they had to, like, sort of, work out like roles within their community is that right as well so they yeah. find each other like you know who was going to be the farmer who was going to yeah. cook dinner who was going to do all these things so it was like you know like kind of living together in this mm -hmm. in this virtual space mm -hmm. yeah exactly and and you know that was a big big challenge for them and and you know some again not all digital practices not all people that play games so they were learning from each other they said that experience was like quite quite key that was a big part of it you know getting building new skills through peer uh, learning yeah and that that's that's what we're doing I and mean, all these things are online at the moment you can go and visit them but we will have an upcoming event with uh dard futurism group which is another splinter group out of the core members led by curator helen Starr, um and two other artists that she works with amrita dehalu and salma noor um who have been thinking around ideas of afrofuturism from the neoliberal perspective of mark derry rebooting it into the shared ancient traditions with their Somali, Sikh and afro carib cultures, collapsing and reframing linear time as Kairos, a moment of being. So that's coming up soon. Whew. <sighs> I think that's everything. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and yeah, maybe we should just briefly mention we are planning um, Spur 2.0. I mean, we've been really lucky that a lot of people have come on board to partner with the project to help with what that we're doing and yeah we never thought it would grow so big in such a short space of time so we're now looking at kind of um reaching out to other port partners to support the project and then yeah putting another open call out soon in time for graduating students this year um and yeah thinking about that now um yeah we've only just kind of like been launching the public program after a year but yeah we need to think about the new the new cycle now mm -hmm. yeah um yeah there's just our contact details on there um yeah but you know to find out more just go to spur.world is the is the website is the platform yeah and you'll find us on there you can get in touch and yeah we should probably set a mailing list up for people right. to jump that's yeah. fantastic. Thank right. you, Megan. And <clears throat> brilliant, really exciting. I won't um I won't take up too much time. I've only got a you know, like a few sort of a couple of questions really, and just to start the ball rolling, and then we'll hand over to the audience, really. Um why spur? What's spur mean? Um <laughs> <laughs> feeling uh, something that's going to grow into something i don't know we've seen, i don't know <laughs> that's like a spur is like well that that's a spore though isn't it i yeah, guess we get off spore for a while didn't we like spore spur <laughs> yeah i mean to be honest i don't know i have no conceptual um i just quite like the word maybe just kind of like to, spur spur people. Want to do something <laughs> Um, but yeah, I just thought it was a nice word. I don't really have a kind of answer for that. I'm terrible at titles as well. Mm -hmm. Like, 
I think it's come great. Up I mean, I, I, yeah, that the link between Spore and Spur was really obvious. I mean, for me, when I saw the the graphic that you created, that's behind mm. you, Joey, this idea of a seed and the hooks, mm. and something that like a spur and spore, like some, like you know, the way that pollen has little hooks on it that means yeah. You know, um, yeah, because that's like a riding spur, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, and there's the book, you know, there's a, I don't know, you know, Derrida wrote a book called Spurs about Nietzsche, which is all about. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. The, spurs, the fact that, you know, you have to get, make a horse ride, you stick these mm. sharp things into it. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a sharp thing that that spurs things into action. Like <laughs> yeah. That's, that, uh, that's that exactly why. why it's called that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Right. I, I, I was really intrigued by the way in which um, you saw, I felt that you're both struggling to find language to describe kind of what goes on. And <laughs> if you want to say something about, you know, why you think that might be. Um, well, I think we weren't, sorry, if I go first. Um, I mean, I think it's a very like complex thing. And um I mean, I think I find myself actually in my own art practice as well. Like if I'm completely, I think if I'm completely kind of like lost in something and it has all these kind of like different, um, different trajectories and different layers, then that's when I think it's most exciting. And I don't think like it is, you know, one thing that's easily, you know, described. Um, there is this complexity to it and I mean I think with you know maybe talking about digital virtual worlds as well like we've been through you know many years of like net art and digital art and post-internet art and all of these things and I guess like when we um went into lockdown there was this kind of like rush to you know produce digital content and do these things but kind of like you know go you know seeing that kind of like history of digital art and stuff it's like wanting to also like I don't know like really explore the possibilities within like digital worlds and and make that really kind of like expansive but not like you know it's not like we were doing straightforward mm -hmm. zoom talks or yeah, presentations yeah. or yeah. something it was like okay like how do we really like expand this and challenge this and explore these different kind of realms and it yeah it becomes really fuzzy I guess as to like what that what that is I probably haven't answered that very well yeah, again, that's, that's a good, it's, a, it's a good thing that it, <laughs> yeah. It. yeah we're kind of yeah, trying something new out and trying to find the right words and trying to figure out what it is, you know, <laughs> and what's going on, you know, because there's other, there's lots of people involved and, you know, it's kind of an open authored thing in lots of ways. There's elements where you have to be clear and then you're like, do we, is this a residency? What is this? What are they doing? Like, <laughs> are we going to, you know, does that devalue it by giving it the wrong name? Like sometimes you've got to be kind of a bit clear because people really need to understand what they're signing into. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, was, I think when we were like launching it, weren't we? Like we were like, we call this a virtual residency. Yeah. But then it's like, yeah. yeah, like you say, you have to call it something to be clear to what people are going into. But I don't think... Um, yeah, it wasn't just that, I think. It's a um, cult, really. But... <laughs> it's not a cult. Like... <laughs> <laughs> it's not a cult. But, it is, you know, people have become, you know, they feel they are, you know, their spur. It's, it's, to be it's something they're proud to be a part of. It's like, it's not, not a club. It's not It's not supposed to be that, but there's something more yeah. different to it than that because of... Right. That's really good. And I've got one final question for both of you, and, and, and it's like to do with um, the fact that you both create, you've got, both got your own um, space, physical spaces. So you've both made a commitment in Chaos Magic and D-Unit in Bristol and Nottingham to create in physical spaces for artists. So you've, you know, you've commit, very much committed to that. And I just wonder if you could say a little bit of how you understand the relationship between that commitment to a physical space for artists and, and your commitment also to virtual, uh, work in the virtual. 
Do you want to answer first, Megan? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, and um, I mean, I'm a, an a slightly. I haven't even opened yet, so yeah, because of the pandemic, it's been um, you know, so uh, being able to traverse both sides has been kind of key. But it would be something that I was going to do anyway because you know, I'm I'm always trying, you know, trying to find ways of. Well, for me personally, in my practice as well as in the space, you know, the two realms exist, you know simultaneously anyway they, 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 they're, they're there we we flip between these two spaces on a daily basis in our daily life on a phone and you know like they're, they're they're really integrated so I think you know any space now is well for me it's it's what you, that 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 replication is kind of important for artist practice um for my own practice as well you know so I think that's uh you know a big big part of what art art is kind of do now you know so <laughs> there's lots of it's like yeah like not making a distinction I mean I don't make a distinction between yeah like the virtual and the physical spaces or something and I think if you're if you're presenting an artist or doing a project then you figure out what that that project or that practice needs it's not like you know you're trying to kind of like put it into a certain container like let's open up that container it's like I don't know like if you're I mean you know I like to kind of think about expanded exhibition making as well like not just kind of like presenting artworks in a space in the traditional way I mean at Chaos Magic we really try to think about as well it's not just like about showing artists work and um I don't know just for the sake of like showing their work and <laughs> uh, promoting their work in that way it has to have some of the kind of like expanded practice so involve like research or other people or there's you know there's something happening with that artwork it's not you know just about it's like display or something so um I think, I yeah like that. just to think about the virtual and physical you know like about this kind of expanded practice it's you know whatever and I think maybe as an audience is a more uh, a kind of the appetite for kind of interaction is a bit stronger than it used to be. And like, you know, how, you know, that can be it, the use of technology encourages, you know, an investigation or the, uh, the, the audience is like a participant in it rather than just a passive viewer. I think that's. Kind yeah, of exactly. Of yeah. I mean, and a lot of what the artists that we work with on social club that were a lot of, um, were really heavily involved in the concepts um, of starting the, the digital platform and how that was set up as well. Their, their whole practice is about that audience um, participant artwork, like the, 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 the divide just like kind of like disappears that the, you know, that the audience like creates the work and is the participant and takes part in this kind of like role playing game that they are then, they are then the work you know, like the, there isn't like this kind of like divide in that that sense either. Um, Brilliant, great, thank you very much. Um, Leanne, do you wanna uh, read any questions from the chat? Yeah, no worries, thanks John. And thank you, Joe, and thank you, Megan. <laughs> um, we've got a couple of questions. So we have one from Maria, which is in this project, do you think there is a connection between like non-human, the spiritual and technology? Like how does that connection come out basically? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I think, yeah, I think very much so. I think that the project is very much centered on fluidity of, you know, whether that be human non-human I mean what are these kind of binaries anyway we're like you know these things are like completely fluid and these categories shouldn't exist um but yeah I think lots of the work um lots of the project does um kind of like oh god yeah I'm lost for words again <laughs> <laughs> um I think what was really came out for me I mean I was in the role play as well um but like just the way the 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 use through the use of technology and the role playing games and the, that kind of thing 
that you could become anything and you could talk in any as anything because there's no like restrictions on your kind of physicality it's just your imagination and you know you can kind of put yourself into the you know you you can become a dung beetle and then <laughs> as dung beetle that is going around collecting religious artifacts which is what, <laughs> you know, like there it is it's like it smashes it apart because you don't even you know you're not trying to perform as a dung beetle in a costume you know it's like all of that's gone so the technology yeah kind of liberates it I think that's the best yeah way. you're liberated from your own bodies I guess as yeah. well um but also we thought it was um we thought it was restrictive at first because we was like okay we're, we're getting them to produce these pseudo identities or you know their avatar or something and we also thought that that was maybe a bit problematic we was like well you could be multiple things as well you don't have to stick to one thing you could be multiple characters you could you know you could shape shift throughout the the time that you're on there you could shape shift pers personalities or forms or um mm -hmm. yeah so it's really to explore that as well yeah right thank you um so we've got another one from nat which is I'd like to know if there has been any discussions around the explosion of F NFT and blockchain art for your own practice or amongst the participants. Amazingly, we haven't actually talked about NFTs yet. Wow. Um, I know that a couple of the participants actually from the core group have sold NFTs, but they've done that like themselves. Um, I mean, it's an interesting, it's an interesting conversation, but yeah, it's not something that we've touched on for the project yet. Um, Could be a new source of funding. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's like an interesting, maybe, I mean, it's an interesting expert to talk about. I mean, this could take us all night as well to think about decentralized networks and, um, you know, like artists organizing and art, you know, it could subvert the gallery system and blah, blah, blah. But <laughs> yeah. um, which is one thing we do want to do. Like. <laughs> But yeah, but we um maybe not not quite yet. <laughs> we have yeah. It was something that comes up in conversation about yeah. Can I jump in but, there? Because I think there's mm. part of the problem. It's an an old problem really around the trying to trying to um, overcome or somehow avoid the competitiveness of the art world and to lose your identity or to not be an author to be have a collective identity or ultimately the market requires individuals to be identified with artworks mm -hmm. and if on all those economic mechanisms require bank accounts mm -hmm. individual artists even collectives can but rarely sell work so i think there's like a tension there between the market what the market wants and the and the kind of the utopian if you like I, optimism of you know non-binary fluidity of identity mm -hmm. in cyberspace or on the internet and there's a there's a there's a tension there that and maybe not everyone knows what um and then FT is, by the way. I've just Googled it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Megan, you need to know what an NFT is. I know, I know what it is. I just didn't know it was called an NFT. I, didn't know. I was like, all oh, right, yeah, those, yeah. I understand all of that, but I didn't know the lingo. <laughs> oh, dear. Worries. But when in that, also, you've got all the um, there's a, other things. Um, what is it, Megan? Yeah, from the, what is it? What does Google say? <laughs> a non fungible fungible yeah. fung fungible what's that non fungible fungal <laughs> a non fungal network <laughs> <laughs> token there we go token. uh non fungible i don't know what token is a unit of data stored on a digital ledger called a blockchain that certifies a digital asset to be unique and therefore not interchangeable okay so it's like the kind of opposite of what we're saying really <laughs> yeah I think we've been more discussing about like um you know how do yeah not necessarily selling stuff at all I don't think that's ever come up but we're we are to, we do think about like how do we raise you know pay you know some kind of living wage for the artists and how do we make support that because it, it, you know money doesn't go very far far kind of to, to run it and um We've talked about maybe subscriptions and the way that video, you know, Netflix or something like that operates, just getting support that way, using other models instead of the gallery model. Um, no worries. Um, I've got I've got a blockchain idea though that I think could make Ooh. us rich. And okay. <laughs> <laughs> afterwards, after this, 
Let's, go, let's talk. We, okay. can, we can sustain ourselves now. <laughs> right. We've got a fi final question from G Shan, um, which is uh, When does the meteor hit? What happens next following the hit and the project ahead? A hit. Yeah, it's already <laughs> hit. So the meteor hit in um, in the eco world, um, which is the residency that was for a month with Mycological Twist. So that already hit, that hit yesterday. Um, I haven't been in the game actually since yesterday. So I don't know what's left of the world. Um, I think they managed to build like this kind of like really high platform though. So I think like everybody survived, but just like the world was destroyed underneath. So I guess like they can go back in and rebuild it or... They've got a month to rebuild um, and they're, they're just figuring, yeah, that they're, they're, they're back in. <laughs> yeah. It didn't, yeah. there's only a couple of trees left. Okay. Um, and a little bit of they're, they're gonna it's gonna be a struggle, but they're gonna give it a go. <laughs> right, but the meteor no, so. didn't destroy the whole of Spur World. The Spur World is a multiverse, so that was just one of the worlds. So yeah. We can <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's yeah, just We've one. Got one left um by Karen David, which is amazing project. How do you how you see your roles within it? Architects, designers, curators, dungeon masters, or all of the above? <laughs> dungeon masters. Oh, I'm good. Good. Dungeon master. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I guess like what we were saying before, I mean, we, I guess, I mean, I guess I see myself as like, I don't know, you, you're going to say Megan, but like, we kind of like put this stuff together, I guess, and but want that to be this kind of fertile ground where people can take the tools that we give them and then do what they, they want with that. I mean, we don't want to kind of like direct or curate like how the artworks are or mm. how whatever is kind of like manifested, like, um, you know, uh, you know, we just kind of like set up um, the platform, you know, um, in, you know um, introduce people to them like ways of working and then it's very much you know up to the participants of like how they then mm -hmm. build with that um yes it's tricky it's like mul mul multiple we've sort of <laughs> kind of hover between different roles when sometimes in the di a direction is needed and we have to kind of you know we we've written we sort of written applications together we asked for their feedback and you know into what it's going to say but sometimes we've got we i suppose at some point certain things book stops with us other times we're just facilitating and like we we're basically just ba barely doing anything so it's like it, it kind of it, it wavers around lots of different things and i think that's an, partly to do with again because it's online and you know you're not you know that those kind of roles kind of shift a bit um, there's a production producer element there's a bit of direction um yeah I, I, yeah bit of mentoring so bit of... Only just like you know it has only been running a year like just yeah just a year now as well so it has been like very much as working out what this thing is and probably still not worked it out as we've gone along as well so um, I probably can change it again. <laughs> yeah <laughs> classic evolve it evolve it Great. Well, I think are we are we probably up to time, Leanne, Rebecca. Is that where we're about at time? So, great. That was really fantastic. Thanks, Joey. Thanks, Megan. And thank um, you so much. And thanks everybody for coming. And if you guys yeah. want to hang on a little bit while everyone's gone, we'll say goodbye. <laughs> yeah, a couple of minutes. But thanks everybody for coming. And um, yeah, we'll see you all on uh, hopefully April nineteenth uh, for Van Lee Burke. Cheers. Thank you guys. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.